live session that we are conducting from uh, Wi-Fi platform. And uh, I'm sure those who are watching us today or those who will watch this session later on, definitely they'll, be, they'll, they'll benefit a lot uh, for their ACCA uh, exams because we have two uh, people here with us who uh, have done really well in their ACCA papers. So let me first introduce uh, my team. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, Hassan Dosani, Sir Hassan Dosani with us, and he will be uh, also taking up the show with me today. And he is also part of our panel. Uh, then we have uh, Tishwada Gupta with us, and uh, let me just introduce her as well. She is the youngest ACCA. Uh, in the world and she did uh, her ACCA, but I'm not quoting the age right now, I'll ask her. Uh, so she's the youngest ACCA and have completed ACCA. Uh, so this is a big, big achievement to be honest. Uh, then we have Taha Popatia with us. Uh, he's the top Pakistan affiliate. He's, he got the first position in Pakistan. He's the top Pakistan affiliate and uh, he uh, secured a lot of positions in ACCA papers. And once we'll start with Taha, so he will definitely let us know. Uh, his experience and how he did that. Yes, sir, Hassan Dosani, uh, welcome to this session. Thank you. Uh, and uh, first of all, a lot of congr uh, congratulations to Tashvita for being the youngest ACC affiliate in the whole of the world. That's a big one. And uh, uh, same congratulations to Taha for securing uh, several nationwide positions and uh, affiliate position. So Tashvita, if I may uh, start with you, um, when did you exactly started your ACCA and in how much time did you complete just to qualify as the youngest ACCA in the world? First of all, thank you so much, sir, for having me here. It's a pleasure. And uh, as you asked, I started ACCA back in 2018. So I entered ACCA through the FIA route where I gave the uh, three basic exams of ACCA as diploma exams. And then I entered ACCA officially in July 2018. And uh, I qualified it in April 2020. So it's less than two years uh, to complete ACCA. It took me less than two years. And yeah. Wow, that's, that's really awesome. And uh, I would not force you to, you know, disclose your age. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's really a good one. Yeah, so uh, my age presently is 19 years, but uh, I qualified when I was 18 years old. So you started at 16 and a half, no, 17 and a half, and you completed by? 18. No, you started at, oh, okay, 16 and a half, and you completed in 18. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So I started it after my 10th grade. So what made you select ACCA at, at such a young age? Uh, what was your thought process? Uh, why you opted for ACCA? Did you have uh, someone in the family or did you have some mentors? So how you ended up with ACCA in such a young age? So actually, sir, I always wanted to do something that was different from the crowd. So all of my friends, they were doing or getting, you know, curious about their admissions in uh, best schools so that they can get into the top colleges of India for commerce. So that was their thinking. So even I did it for a few months, but then I, you know, faced uh, discouragement, not because I wasn't able to cope up, but I felt there is a lot of competition that is unnecessary. And uh, we all are running behind a degree which will be same at the end. Everyone will get a BCom, and we are very much, uh, you know, curious about getting that BCom from a reputed college. That is fine, but it was not something which is different from the crowd. So uh, my father, he is a chartered accountant, Indian chartered accountant. So he just um, knew about this uh, career path, and I would have gone for Indian CA because usually in uh, our country we have this thing that uh, Indian CA is better than uh, ACCA. But uh, the thing is that I wasn't able to, you know, I was not eligible to start with CA yet. 
so i decided to go for acca and um, now i'm so satisfied with this course that i can't uh, even think something better than this i'm so glad that i started with it and uh, i had no mentor as such uh, it was just my dad who uh, told me to do this course and he was guiding me as uh, as much knowledge he had so that was the actual thing but uh, i did self study to be honest and uh, because i had my own uh, two institutions you know for plus 1 and plus 2 as well so i needed to go to school and uh, manage acca so there was no as such a mentor team but uh, it was a great journey and i am glad that i did this because it has an international you know career uh, potential so right That's now i'm facing that thing so yeah excellent yes Sir Rizwan, uh, you are on mute. Okay. Now, is 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 it audible, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Taha. Why ACCA? All right. Uh, so I did choose ACCA because of its international recognition, and okay. uh, it is known worldwide. And uh, at that early age, I had dreams to move abroad. because being honest i never like to live in pakistan being very honest so, so you, you are in pakistan I, right now yeah i i feel really unfortunate for that to be honest being <laughs> honest <Okay. laughs> but uh, circumstances uh, made that uh, and i am here but yes i started acca because it has international recognition it has demand in middle east canada uh, uk america all over the world Okay. Okay. Uh, Taha, uh, how many papers uh, were there in which you secured position? First of all, just name the papers. All right. Uh, the first one was F two, with a hundred percent score. F three with a ninety six percent score, and then uh, there was used to be a paper called corporate governance risk and ethics, which is replaced by SPF. So that yeah, P one, right? Yes, P one. Then I had position in P two as well. Then I had position in P five as well. And then I was declared Pakistan's top affiliate for having a maximum aggregate marks in the professional series. But 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 Taha, how you manage so much? How many? Uh, as you mentioned, so many positions. How it was possible for you to manage? positions or you ever thought to get the positions or it was never for positions and you were just covering the things uh to be honest most of the times i uh, i was really afraid whether i will pass or fail and i used to cover things because i remember at the time i was studying for acca uh, i was also pursuing my chartered accountancy because my parents had Um, a dream that uh, our son must be a chartered accountant from Pakistan, the Institute of Chartered Accounts of Pakistan. I was also working in Ernest and Young. I was also teaching at a, a professional qualification institute in Pakistan, and then I used to study. So what I used to do is that uh, during my EY, my time at the audit firm, I used to sit back at the audit line at nights and used to make pass paper summaries. and used to solve one or two past papers daily before moving to home because i knew if i go to home i will sleep so that you don't like I, sports you don't like sports sorry yes, to interrupt i do i do don't uh, look at my current health i used to walk 4 to 5 kilometers daily after morning okay. prayers so my routine was quite different and hectic <laughs> okay okay that's great now we'll come back to taha uh, tishwata uh, just let uh, the audience know uh, the papers you opted for in every attempt uh, i just want to ask what strategy actually you opted for because as you mentioned you have done acca uh, at a so young age so what were your paper strategy uh well i went to for two papers at one attempt and uh, sometimes when i had my school exams the semester exams then i uh, skipped that uh, sitting or opted just for one exam for that sitting so if i tell you the exact uh, chronology uh, in which i gave the exams 
so it was first i went for like i entered acc after the fia so i am counting it from july 2018 so in july 2018 i gave the f5 exam the performance management uh, in the september attempt then i gave f7 financial reporting and financial management together i don't know why but it just came into my mind and i gave two of these exams together and in december then i gave the uh, because i gave fm in december i had um, you know attachment with that exam and i felt like i should go for afm now so i went for afm exam in uh, march 2019 and audit and assurance that was my f8 exam so uh, i opted for afm and then i had to plan because when you give professional level exam when you have not qualified a skill level exam that is in my case it was tax exam i hadn't qualified tax yet and i was going for afm so i had to plan or uh, that means i had to made make a payment for the next sitting in march itself so i made payment for tx exam in um, this next sitting after march and uh, then i gave tx and sbr together then i gave sbl in december and then my last attempt was march 2020 where i gave advance uh, audit and assurance so that was my chronology and the strategy was very uh, unplanned kind of a thing nothing like uh, i i planned it or i uh, had any you know set goal or something it was just like i gave one exam i got the confidence with the pass and then when you get a pass again and again or uh, even when you are you know doing well and you're getting the appreciation and even if you qualify a small exam of acc it feels great and it motivates you to clear more exams so that was uh, what happened with me so i had no strategy i just gave the exams uh, as they came okay now that's great uh tishwata one more thing i just need to add here can you just uh, let the audience know and the students who are planning for the next papers uh the basic paper strategy i'm not talking about the paper as you mentioned but i just want to know that for example if you if you were giving performance management paper or financial reporting paper how you used to cover the syllabus was it uh was kit important for you or the book reading how many question you used to do uh, something you can help right so uh, i believed in this thing that complete the syllabus as soon as possible because uh, then you have to practice a lot because it, uh, practice is the key to pass in acc that is my experience even uh, if you see that okay in the past exams like in a subject like audit there are many repetitive questions so what have been asked previously with a little bit change it will be asked again because they don't have something new to ask every time so we we have to practice a lot especially in a exam technical exam like pm so uh, there also we need a lot of practice and i used to practice the whole kit sometimes it was that i used to practice the kit twice or maybe sometimes one bpp and one kaplan so both of the kits i used to solve for exams and it was like i needed to cover the syllabus as soon as possible but with time you know uh, sometimes your schedule is very tight and you're not able to practice the whole kit or uh, you're not able to practice up to the extent you want then you have to go for the strategic questions so you have to go for the uh, questions uh, where they have written that work on the uh, foot uh, steps of the tutor in the kit so i used to go for those questions and um, yeah that helped me a lot and then i gave mocks also i i feel mocks are the most important part uh, in your career or in your acca journey because then you know about the time management because if you have every knowledge you know how to solve the question you know everything you know the presentation and then the time is not there then it creates a lot of trouble so give the mocks as many mocks as you can and get them assessed that was my uh, strategy 
Okay, one thing I just want to add here, Sir Hassan, uh, we uh, we are getting here questions as well. Uh, so I would uh, want uh, the audience to ask questions from Tashweta, from Hal, from Taha, and even from Sir Hassan, if you want to ask any questions. Uh, we will be answering your questions definitely. Uh, I'm getting the questions here, but uh, let's first move on with the session further ahead, and then I will ask uh, the questions that are here. So Abu Bakr, just wait. Or we'll come back to your question. Over to Sir Hassan. Uh, Taha, uh, how many years you took to pass your ACCA? All right. Uh, my story is quite an orthodox one. Uh, after completing my A levels, I started studying for ACCA. However, after three to four months, I had to drop that plan. And the reason was that my parents also always wanted me to be a chartered accountant from ICAP, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan. So what actually happened is that I went for CA ICAP and in module A, the first module of uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, I secured a position, a merit certificate talking about the CA in quantitative methods. This proved to my parents that I can actually do both things together. So then I convinced my parents that my willingness is ACCA and your willingness is CA. I will perform in that. If I can score merit, I can pass the papers. So then I started ACCA as well. So what actually happened is that I pursued both the qualifications together. I started in ACCA in around 2012. Then uh, I had to manage my mandatory articles, the, uh, which is required by laws in the Institute of Chartered Accounts of Pakistan and the ACCA. Also, after securing some positions in ACCA and also in CA, I was offered a teaching opportunity at one of the very prestigious institutes in Pakistan. So I grabbed that opportunity as well. And at the time, I had five to six things to manage together. So hence, it took me around five years to qualify, which I believe is too much. If you are a full-time student, it must not take more than two years. This is my belief. But yes, on an average, students take 2.5 years. So my story is quite an orthodox one, a, a bit different one. Right, so you secured like five uh, national positions in ACCA plus the overall affiliate position. You also secured the top position in one of the papers of CA, right? Yeah. Uh, I would believe that you must have been a very studious intellectual <laughs> person. Were you a topper in your school as well? Uh, yeah, uh, I completed my A-levels in one single year. And that too with straight A grades. I did my A-levels. And yes, I had to complete my A-levels within time because that was something uh, bound from my school. But uh, yes, I completed my A-levels in a single year instead of spending two years for such a short course. So uh, I have always been, alhamdulillah, performing well in my studies. So there was no um, nothing to talk about. Right. So I think there is no doubt that you are one of the God gifted persons who is very, you, you know, very fast. And uh, what I want you to, uh, you know, share your experience for lots of students out there who are not as God gifted as you are. Um, only one person can take a position, whereas all the others are followers. So if you can share your some tips and secrets uh, for people who are struggling to pass. They might not aspire to be a global place winner, but they just want to pass. So uh, in especially in those subjects in which you secured uh, positions, I would want you to share some basic tips of how you prepared. Did you take some classes? Did you uh, focus more in the last couple of weeks or how was your approach uh, from for uh, and make your points uh, very relevant to people who are ordinary and normal IQ level students. All right. 
sir, uh, the first thing is that I never ever took any classes for my ACCA, and even for CA, I nearly skipped ninety to ninety-five percent of my classes. My secret sauce is to do as many past papers as you can and do them again and again also what i used to do is that i used to study the case i used to read the acc answer and then make a summary bullet bullet points on microsoft word and then uh, prepare a booklet a short booklet of let's say 10 or 15 attempt past papers and I used to uh, read that booklet again and again. I used to print that booklet after typing it in my uh, Microsoft Word. So to students, I recommend that the past papers, as Tashita also emphasized, past papers are really important. The examiner cannot ask anything uh, beyond past papers in majority of the cases. For example, if you can do past papers of last 10 attempts, you can easily do the past paper of your attempt, which is the 11th attempt. If there is anything new, yes, there will be definitely new things will be asked, but 60, 70 or 80% things will be same from the past papers. So my secret sauce has always been solving ACCA past papers and solving them again and solving them again. Excellent. Excellent. I think that is a very practical solution from a person who has uh, proven himself uh, that with multiple priorities like doing CA, doing his articles and also teaching. Uh, so I would really, you know, as a student, I would really take this as a, a very practical solution from the horse's mouth. Right, right. So, uh, Tashvita, so now you being the youngest affiliate, what's your plan now for the next near future? Uh, well, sir, currently I'm also pursuing my MSc from University of London, uh, which we can do after ACCA. So my plan is to pursue a PhD in future because uh, I am into teaching and uh, I am working as uh, an accountant as well. A freelancer accountant uh, while studying and while teaching side by side currently. So that is my plan. Plus, I'm also doing one bachelor's because that is a must for uh, Indian studies. So in Indian studies, I am in my second year of my BCom. And uh, according to the UK standards, I'm doing a master's MSc in professional accountancy. So my future goals are very clear. I want to mentor as many students as possible and share my, um, you know, the knowledge and whatever I have, I know the best of my knowledge I want to share. With Excellent. That's very inspiring, Tashvita, uh, keeping your age in mind. I'm very impressed uh, with your goals and aspirations. Keep it up. Thank you. Okay. So uh, coming back to Taha, uh, Taha, as Sir Hassan mentioned that there are so many ordinary students and uh, it's really important to keep those in mind because yes, everybody cannot secure a position, but still, but still if someone wants to, so what you'll recommend, how to get a position? Again, I must say, that the main thing is that you must solve past papers. Course is important. Do go through or skim the study text, but do not go into the details. You are not required to read and you are not expected to understand everything. I repeat, you are not expected to understand everything. If you are not able to understand anything, skip it. When you will move to past papers and do the ACCA past papers, which are very well uh, defined and very well structured, and you apply those techniques, your concepts will also get clear. And yes, do the past papers again and again. This is uh, the only uh, thing I used to follow and I will recommend. Okay. And uh, what's your future plan? Uh, as you know, I will be continuing with my uh, teaching career. 
uh, I have left the, the uh, job uh, and now from 2016 onwards, I have decided to be a full-time professional uh, ACCA and CA and ICME, uh, ICMA tutor. So, so I will pursue my career as a teacher. So do, do, you, do you recommend students do, doing ACCA and come into teaching? Because uh, in Pakistan, I'm sure in India as well, uh, the young students, once they pass, they want to uh, go towards teaching. It's good actually, uh, but uh, uh, what do you think? Is teaching the only thing that they should start with or the practical experience is what matters as well? Uh, well, practical experience matters a lot. It matters a lot. And I will recommend anyone to move to teaching only if they like it. Because you see, uh, if you go for teaching, um, many people will criticize you, including your own family members. They will recommend you not to be a full-time teacher. All right. So only pursue teaching if you have passion for it, because if you do not have passion for it and you are thinking to go for a full-time teaching and people start criticizing you, you will be down. So my uh, personal advice, my personal suggestion is that if you do like what your role is, for example, if you like audit work or if you like finance work or if you are getting a good opportunity, go for that. Yes, you can do teaching as a secondary source of income or a second or, or even if you like it, you can do it at evenings or keep it at a second priority. Only I will recommend teaching full time teaching in the case if you have a very strong passion for it and you know that if anyone criticizes, you will just do what you want. Okay. Okay, that's that's good. Now, uh, what what do you want to recommend to the ACC students for the coming papers in general? Uh, what will be your last message to the students? All right. Uh, first of all, uh, I let's say the attempt is uh, around two point five months or two months from now, the December attempt. And do so, keep in mind the COVID nineteen. Okay, do keep yeah. in mind the COVID nineteen impact. So. Uh, I, must, I will recommend them to start studying if they have not, because we do have a lot of students who are also working. And it actually becomes really burdensome if you just think that you will cover the entire course at the end. Start studying from today. Do a little, but do daily. Do not skip any day. At least read a page. Keep a book by your uh, bedside, maybe. Uh, read text, read uh, past papers, but do study daily because you see, we do not have much time left. And since the ACC attempts are now three months, if you are picking one or two papers, you do not have six months, you do not have entire six months and there is no rest period now. So I recommend that if they are attempting December exams, they must start today and they must study daily. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sir Hassan, I think uh, we should ask uh, Tishpita for the recommendation as well to the students. Um, yes, please. Go ahead, Tashvita. Yeah. So uh, I would recommend to the students that uh, start as early as possible. And if you are working side by side or you have other commitments or you are studying some other course, so um, start with a little of it, like the concepts and try to cover the concepts as soon as possible and then go for the practice. So I used to follow this approach, like um, you should circle the areas or you should highlight those areas which you're not understanding at this point. Because at this point, we are obviously not very serious for studies because we think there are uh, more two months to go or uh, there's a lot of time we are having. So it's fine. It's a normal human tendency to think that way. So just keep highlighting the areas which you feel like that, okay, I'm not able to understand or I am confused here. And then at the end or uh, like uh, 15 days before the exam or somewhat like then, uh, then make sure that you have gone through those things again. And then just pick those things which you have highlighted in the kit, in the text, or whatever uh, study material you follow. 
so just read those things for that one week and don't forget to give the mock exams and uh, that's what i recommend and just start it and uh, all the best Rizwan, you are on mute. Okay, now we are uh, having some questions, uh, answer session here. There are certain questions that students are asking, so uh, I I'll just ask one by one. Uh, sir, uh, I I need to ask uh, one question from Sir Hassan Dosani because uh, I think uh, you will be in a better position to answer this. The question is from Abu Bakr here. How much professional papers one should attempt? with a full time job uh what and what should be the order okay what should be the order and how much professional papers one should attempt doing the job uh good question abu bakar uh, there is no one right answer for this it all depends on student to student uh, my experience for the majority is uh that you attempt those paper first in which you feel you will pass quickly and uh, yeah and you can uh, decide that from your uh, previous papers like if you are good in audit then you go for advance audit first okay uh, the objective is to pass maximum papers up front so that your confidence is you know boosted in each attempt uh, you can give maximum two papers uh, but you know you need to assess your own situation i would rather say go slow and steady rather than going for more quantity uh, however uh, when it comes to sbl i really uh, uh, advise most of the students that do not mix sbl with any other paper when you are giving sbl then try to make sure that you give it as a stand alone paper push it to the last no problem keep sbl as a last but do not try and give it along with any other paper simultaneously and the reason is that sbl is the latest paper which has been added to the acca syllabus it is extremely different from the rest of the professional papers so there is a there is a mental conflict of in the techniques and in the approach right so uh, keeping sbl aside you go for all the uh, professional papers in whatever sequence you want just um, go for the papers which you have higher confidence okay Okay. Okay. That's great. Uh, now, one more question, uh, Taha. It's for you. Uh, which two options are best to take? Triple uh, A, APM, AFM, or ATX? All right. It's a tough one. I must say. Anyways, uh, it entirely depends where the student wishes to uh, specialize in, in which field he wishes to specialize in. For example. uh i personally never liked my audit work at all so for me it was always afm and apm for me but obviously it depends upon person and person person to person in their nature if someone has pursued their career in audit and assurance if they are working in an audit firm or if they feel that they will be a tax specialist or a tax consultant in future he must go for triple a and atx so there is no one answer and it entirely depends upon where the person wishes to see himself in the future okay right okay. uh, may i may i add another perspective yeah. to this because i do get this question uh, uh i have a little bit different approach to this and i tell the students go for that combination which you will pass forget about your future uh plan or where which line of profession you want to go right now your one and ultimate objective is to qualify acca so select those papers okay in an ideal world you will select the paper which you like or which you want to pursue but in case you are facing some challenges then forget about 
the ideal combinations, you go for that paper, which has a better passing ratio. Once you qualify, you will be on the top of the world. And then you can always pursue that additional paper after you qualify if you want to pursue a specialization in any professional line. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. The only objective you should keep in mind is you have to qualify as soon as possible rather than the right combination. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tashwita, this, is, uh, this one is for you. Uh, a student is asking, can a student give three exams together? Because I'm sure uh, you have done this. If yes, how many hours should uh, students study? Three papers together, how many hours to study? Well, uh, you can give three exams together. The maximum limit is four in one sitting and eight exams in one year. So okay. uh, if you go for three exams in one sitting, then um, there's no such limit of hours uh, because every exam requires different uh, sitting schedule. Like uh, the syllabus of one exam could be lesser than the syllabus of other exam or one exam requires more of reading and other exams requires more of the practice. So there's no set limit, but I would advise you that don't do, uh, do this blunder of giving three exams together because it would be hectic for you. And uh, it is a risky situation. It's better if you give two exams and you can uh, just divide the hours based on the syllabus. So make some weekly goals, okay? Don't go for... Uh, uh, mm. bigger goals of three months make weekly goals that in one week i will finish the topics these many topics of this particular exam and do both of these exams simultaneously don't say that first i will finish this one exam and then i will do the other exam because that never happens uh, the other exam you procrastinate and then uh, you can't you can't start with the second exam on time it's from my personal experience so start with both of these or three if you're giving three of these exams together and make weekly goals and then pursue it. And if even if you are not able to give the set time in one day, if there was some trouble that day, so you can just, you have to keep a limit that I have to in any case complete this work by this week. That should okay, be. Okay, that's good. Mohamed Mustakim, I can answer your question. Uh, your question is, may I take AFM and APM together? Yes, you can definitely uh, take AFM, APM, and yes, it will help you a lot in industry as well. So if you're planning for industry, AFM and APM is a very good combination. Uh, one more question for Tashwita here relating to SBR. Uh, the question from Omar is, uh, he's planning to appear in SBR for December. Uh, so uh, he's asking what other options uh, to go with SBR? Uh, well, I would say you can go if you want to go for audit, advanced audit and assurance, because uh, what we that study in, yeah. yeah, so if we are studying the accounting standards, then audit starts after the financial statements are prepared. So uh, for audit, you need vast knowledge of SBR. So if I have given SBR in the previous attempt, there is a tendency that I will forget what I studied and it will harm my triple exam. So it's better I recommend the, this thing to my students or any of my contacts who take advice that if you want to give audit and assurance, then you can go for SBR and AAA together. Okay, so I hope uh, your questions have been answered well. Let me make a quick announcement here as well that Sartaha Popatia is uh, also teaching uh, advanced financial management uh, at WIFI online for December 2020 and uh, for further as well. And Tishwita uh, has recently joined WIFI as well for SBR uh, uh, for December 2020. So you may contact them uh, because now they are not just uh, the place winners they are also the teachers so i'm sure teachers like these will help you uh, as well uh, to achieve uh, those great positions uh, so i hope uh, we have answered your question it was a nice one uh, over to you sir hassan right so uh, shall i summarize the today's session do we have more questions uh, we are done with the questions uh, i have just summarized all the questions now. I think we are done. Right. So, right. So I think, uh, uh, dear students, we have been fortunate that we have got 
uh, Tashvita Gupta with us, being the youngest ACCA affiliate in the in the world, and Taha Popetia being uh, the top place winner in Pakistan for several subjects. Uh, I think the combination is very good. Ta Tashvita has been a full-time student, right? Whereas Taha uh, was not a full-time student. He was a working student. So we've got like both role models in front of us. So those of you out there who are full-time students, they can, they can you know, take guidance from Tashvita. Whereas those students who are working, uh, they can take guidance from Taha. Uh, most students in my experience well, the mistake they make is uh, they start their studies uh, towards the end uh, you know towards the, when they near the exam dates and then they spend more time on covering the syllabus and because of that they are left with limited time for practice that's the most common mistakes which students make so I think uh, today's discussion, my takeaways, what I picked up from these two brilliant students, my takeaway is that you guys uh, should make your weekly goals. You should start early. For example, when you gave an attempt, do not wait for your result. Start preparing for the next subjects. You should start early, make your weekly goals, and you study on a daily basis. Even if it is for one hour, you must study on a daily basis and you must cover your syllabus quickly so that you are left with sufficient time to do a lot of past papers. Now, both of these students, Taha and Tashvita, they had in common, they both used to do a lot of past practice. In fact, both of them said that they do practice at least twice so they solve a paper two times and then they make their notes and then they go through their notes to in the last weeks. So I think both these techniques were common and I can swear these guys didn't knew each other before, right? But both of them um, followed this technique of doing daily studies and focusing more on at least doing 10 past papers twice. And uh, mock exams was another takeaway from these two students. And lastly, I uh, something caught my attention when Taha mentioned that when he was doing his articleship training with, uh, with uh, ENY, he used to sit back in the office after office hours and used to study for an hour or two. I think uh, many of you students who are at professional states, you are working students, you are supporting your families. You are, you know, juggling with multiple priorities in your life. And once you enter your home, your attention will be diverted towards, you know, many other things. I think that if you are a working student, try and sit a little bit in your office, if practical, if feasible. I think that's a good suggestion that you stay back in your office, invest one hour in your studies, and then you step out of your office. I think that was my takeaway in a summarized manner from speaking with these two brilliant students. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you very much, for Sir Hassan. Uh, still, I'm receiving a lot of questions. What do you think, Sir Hassan? Should we take questions? I think we should take at least three okay. more questions because uh, 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 this is a good opportunity for students to learn from these two students. Okay, okay, great. Now, uh, Taha, uh, the question is from Salman. Sir, I can't do better time management in paper. It always creates a problem for me. So what is your recommendation for time management? All right. Uh, time management is a very common problem for majority of the students. Even I remember uh, that I used to miss out four or five marks at times, but uh, I have noticed the students missing out 10 or 15 marks in an exam paper. But do remember that even then, I, I personally know students, I personally know my colleagues who have left maybe 20 marks in the exam, and they have cleared it. 
so the first thing is that what you do is correct really matters then when we talk about time management you have to uh, follow the grid that is given on the back side of the accs suggested answer it will really help you to know where you are going wrong and how to manage the answer for example if there is a four mark question the acc answer is a quite lengthy one but then at the back of that you have some key points and the mark allocation given so i will really recommend that you do follow that you can obviously uh, contact me through wifi platform for further guidance and then you can improve your time management thank you very much uh, let me take two more questions uh, one say sayeda hamna i think your question has been answered by uh, taha sayedna ham uh, hamna has sent message for taha and tashweta that uh, your story is really uh, inspiring her and uh, yes so i think your your question has been answered here now ahmed raza uh, is giving tashweta a message that he will be messaging you on for, uh, facebook for further guidance about acca so please do reply him as well no. uh, one more question uh, uh, i need to take and this relates to sir hasan dosani uh, after completing acca it's better to move towards industry of form sir industry of form after acca right um um all right my uh, short answer would be that after completing your acca if you spend some time in the firm that would be better okay okay uh the reason is that uh, i have spent like 8 years in the firm before i moved to the industry and now i have spent like 15 years in the industry as well uh the firm teaches you a lot of things in a short span of time okay they might not be good paymasters but from a learning point of view you are freshly qualified uh, you are charged up and this is the time when you would really want to invest in practical experience and learn Uh, as much as possible so if you join a firm they will send you to multiple clients you will do you will be auditing or reviewing multiple areas you will be dealing with uh, cfos and finance directors so your soft skills will also be getting you know improved your you will be attending meeting and minutes so it's a very holistic package so in 3 years time you will be acquiring experience of maybe 5 or 6 years time right whereas on the contrast if you join the industry you will be working in one company in one role for at least i would say on an average 3 years before your role will be changed or upgraded so you will get limited exposure and it might get monotonous for you uh, considering your age and your motivation i think you should uh, definitely prefer firm for at least 3 years and when you are equipped with a variety of uh, uh, experience then you can in cash your experience and join the corporate sector uh, at a good level and you know you it will boost your confidence as well thank you very much uh, the last question i'm taking here uh, because i'm getting a lot of question i need to prioritize here sayeda ariba uh, is asking tashweta is this good to take triple a this is a very good question is this good to take triple a before sbr in december attempt uh it's not good to be honest uh you should first uh, qualify sbr that's my uh, advice that first go for spr and then go for triple a or go for uh, both of them together because um, when you end the financial reporting that's when audit starts so if you don't know about financial reporting and the accounting standards then it's quite tough to do audit okay so i i hope you have received your answer you should go for sbr first uh, abista uh, thank you very much uh, she is sending greetings to all of us and she is really inspired by you taha that how you 
were able to become top affiliate. So I, I'm sure you have listened to the story of Taha and you will continue with uh, this as well. Now, uh, uh, Aksam, I can reply your final question. Uh, is this okay to carry on internship for full time during skill module if we got the opportunity? Uh, yes, if you are getting the opportunity, if you are uh, at least you're done with the F7, F8, and then you are uh, at F9 and moving on further. So I think if you if you are appearing for F9 or if you've done F9, then it's good to go for the internship. It's always good, uh, but make sure you have completed your five, six, seven, eight at least, and then you're moving towards that, okay? So thank you very much audience uh, for asking questions. Uh, I'm really sorry we cannot take too many questions. Now what you can do, you can just uh, send us uh, inbox messages to Sir Hassan Dosani for any SBL related questions. You can ask me for APM uh, related questions and Tashfada for SBR and Taha for AFM. For further guidance, you can contact these uh, uh, people on their WhatsApp or on the Facebook. Thank you very much uh, for attending the session. I hope uh, Taha and Tashfada, your story will inspire a lot of young ACCA uh, students who are giving ACCA and people like you really our role model for so many of the students. Uh, I'm sure uh, this session will help you. Uh, it will help them to improve their performance in ACCA. And yes, they will uh, be able to get better opportunity in the future as well. So thank you very much, Sir Hassan Dosani, uh, uh, Taha Popatia and Tashweta for joining uh, us at WIFI for this session. Uh, everybody, thank you very much. Signing off from WIFI. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.